The next thing that I like to talk about is the factor data type and how we can use that to explore our data a little bit more. So this is a, a type of data that's really used when you have a variable that can take a discrete number of categories. So you wouldn't use it for something like name if you've got different study subjects and every single row is going to have a different person's name there. But you can use it for things where you've only got certain categories that, that the value can fall into. I'm giving an example here kind of as a cartoonish level of hair color. So we could think of a vector for hair color where it can only take values. In this case, I'm just using brown, red, and blonde. So we've got those categories that it can fall into, and we've still got a vector in terms of a string of values, but it can only take one of those three. When you have something like that, there are some, some real advantages to saving it as a factor class. And we'll look at that in this set of slides in terms of how that helps out if you're trying to summarize and explore your data. So it helps in thinking about this to understand how R thinks of these factors. When you look at them in a data frame, you might see that kind of like factor indicator for what the class is, but it's really gonna look like this. It's gonna look pretty similar to a character vector in terms of it being words that you read as words. But R, when it knows it's a factor, it will save each of those underneath as a number. And it calls those levels. So it'll have kind of embedded a table where it takes each of the possible levels that that category could take. And that's being assigned to a number. And then when it saves that data, it just saves the number. And between the number and that kind of lookup table, it can go back and identify all those and print those out when you ask it to, to print something. So just as a reminder here, and I've written this down at the bottom, these factor variables can have one or more of these things that we call levels, the possible categories it can take. And when you see something printed out, just keep in mind that R is remembering that, that um, the number that's underneath that particular level. There's one factor category that we have for the Beijing data set. And I'll just go in really quickly. If you've been following along in the first set of slides for this chapter, we read in this data and cleaned it up a little bit, the Beijing PM. So if you have that code saved in a script to set up for the, the practice we'll do right now, you can highlight all of that and do controlled return to uh, run all of it. And then if you want, you can just check and you should have four columns at this point. And then again, for this AQI that we added, that's the one here that's a factor data type. So that's the one we're really gonna be looking at in this set of slides. So we can look and see what levels are saved underneath for any factor that we have by using a call called levels. And then that takes on the inside an extraction of that column. So levels needs to have a vector. We talked about this a little in the last set of slides. For functions like that that need a vector, you can't just put your data frame in. You really need to pull out the one column you want. So the dollar sign is one way to do that. And we can come down here. And I can actually do this down in the, the console. So we can do Beijing PM and then a dollar sign and we've got that AQI. So as a reminder, by doing the dollar sign, it's gonna pull that whole thing out as a long vector. And then around that, we can do this uh, levels function. And when we do that, that'll print out just the possible levels. You can see in this case, there are seven possible levels that AQI can take, and this has printed each of those out. Now, the other way we can do this as a reminder, and I'll go up to the script to do this now, you can also use that pull function in the same way you use the data frame, uh, excuse me, the dollar sign, to pull out just one column and to pull it out in a way that it converts it back into that original vector class rather than just having a one column data frame like you would with select. So we'll do pull here, and then AQI is what we want to pull out. And then after that, we can pipe directly into this levels function if we want, because the first argument that that takes is a vector in this uh, factor class. So if we run that, we can see, oh, I put the wrong object name. Let me try that again. So if we get our object name right, now we can see that that's done the same thing and it's put out the, the seven different levels that we have. 
often when you are looking at something with a factor vector, you might want to figure out how many values go in each of those categories. So in other words, we have in this data set we're looking at hourly observations in Beijing over a certain time period of what the particulate matter level is. And then that's being translated into those AQI levels, the, the, the healthy, um, unhealth, sorry, excuse me, good, moderate, unhealthy for certain groups, unhealthy, and so on. We can count up how many cases there are in each of those levels by using something called group by on our data frame and then counting. And what that group by will do, we've looked at summarize before and that idea that we're taking a lot of observations and kind of um, moving towards a data frame where we've summarized those observations. And so we end up with a summary with fewer rows. And the idea is going to be really similar here. Ultimately, we'll have a smaller data frame with the same number of rows as the number of levels for that factor. And then we'll get a new column that gives how many rows fit the criteria for each of those levels. So here's the basic idea in terms of a cartoon again. If we have that simple, um, the, the simple kind of factor vector that's a column in our data frame, and if it's called hair color, then what we can do is we can group by hair color, and then when we count, it'll go through and it'll say, okay, one of the levels is brown, so how many values do we have of brown? And you can see we have one, two. And so in the end column, that's gonna be our count, we'll see that there are two. And then it'll do the same thing for the next level. Oh, excuse me, sorry, that was blonde, which happened to have two as well. So for brown, we have two. And then for red, if you go through and count, there's only one. And so that shows up as one here. Another thing to note when this prints out, the order will be based on the factor level order. That is often going to be alphabetical. It may be in some cases the order that things first showed up in your data frame, but regardless of the default order, this is something that you can change. And in later slides for other chapters, we'll look really closely at how we can work with these factor variables and do things like change the order of the levels. So let's take a look for the Beijing data and see if we can group by those AQI levels and then count up and see how many fall within each one. So I'll come here in my script and we can do Beijing PN. And then again, we're, um, let, me, let me show that. So in this data frame, it's this AQI column that we want to group by and get, get the counts for. So when we do group by, what the value we will put in is AQI for that column. And then we can do count, and what count will do is it will count out how many rows are in the first level, how many rows are in the second level, and so on for that factor. So let me run that, and then you can come down here, and you can see we've got good, moderate, unhealthy. In this case, it's moving in the order that makes sense, because when we did cut, those were the order of, of our labels. And uh, yeah, we can see almost 2,500 observations fell into this good level. The fewest number, um, which is reassuring, fell into this beyond index, but there were still almost 30 there. And then we've got this NA. So I'm guessing that those are probably cases where we had the negative 99 or some other negative value. Because if you remember back and look back to the first video lecture for this week, when we used cut to take PM 2.5 and transfer it into these AQI levels with the mutate call, we didn't allow for anything to be below zero. So we only set up this category as going from like zero to 50 and then 50 to 100 and so on. And we did leave an infinite top cap, but our bottom cap was zero. So because some of this data is coded again with negative 999 for missing values, um, that's probably what's coming in with these missing values. But something we can keep an eye on as we look a little bit more at this data set. The other thing that you can do that's really helpful with this is you can look at more than one column at the same time. So there we were grouping by the AQI and then we were really trying to explore the summary of that, how many observations are in each of those levels. But say that you have a column that's a factor like this and then a column that's a number and you want to get a numeric summary like the mean or the minimum value. You can get that for everything just with summarized by, your, by itself, and we looked at that in the last, um, the last video, but you can also get that within each group grouping of the factor, so each of the levels of that factor. 
So let's take a look at that with the Beijing data. Oh, sorry, excuse me. First, let's look at it just in this cartoon way. So we could imagine that we might have a data frame where we've got one column that's hair color, that's this factor. And then we've got another one that's the weight of each of the individuals. And we want to find out what the weight is on average within each group by hair color. So we can go through and we can group by hair color. And then when we summarize, so using the summarize that we looked at a little bit in the last set of videos, now when we create this new column of mean weight by taking the mean of the weight, it's not just going to give us one value. Instead, it'll give us a value for every level of the factor. So again, we can see that we get one value that is the mean weight just among the observations where hair color was blonde. So it's just taking this one and this one and taking the mean of those. And then the same idea for brown and for red. And in this case for red, there's only one value. So the mean of that's just the original value. So let's look at that now with the Beijing data. So we're going to group by the factor column, which is the AQI. But then in this case, we want to do summarize. And we want to work to explore a little bit more of that column on the particulate matter value. So let's look and make sure we remember that column name. That name is value. So we can do mean PM equals mean of value for right now. And then we could also, if we wanted to, get something like the minimum, so min PM equals min of the value. So let's take a look at that. And now we can see we have this summarized data frame. It doesn't have nearly as many rows as our original. We only have eight rows. So that's the number of the factor levels plus this missing value for those cases where something was coded as the negative 99. So really missing values. And you can see here that now we have the mean PM for the, all the observations that fell within the good category, as well as the minimum. And then we have the same thing for moderate, unhealthy, and so on. And we can see this is really useful. This seems to help indicate that we did things pretty well before, because these mean values really are within those breaks. So if you remember, the good category should be PM values between 0 and 50. And we see here that the minimum is right there at 1, and that for these mean values, that is kind of halfway in between those two pieces of the range. And so on. For each of these values, all of the mean values are inside the range for, for that split for AQI. So we looked at that with, here I'm giving an example of doing it just with a single column that we get out, and you can certainly do that, but more interesting is going to be to have several. So I was just showing that with mean and min. We could add on max here, which is helpful because then we can kind of see the range. So we'll add that, and now you can see we've added on this range, and we can see that these are lining up really nicely with what we expected. And one interesting thing here, we have that negative 999, so we saw that before as a missing value, but by looking at it this way, we're seeing that there is also a negative 2. So there might be a few different values, depending on something going on with the equipment, for example, that they put in as a code for different issues with the data and reasons for why it wasn't reported. And so one of them might be negative 999, but it looks like another might be negative 2. So just as a note, we looked at that count value when we were looking at summarizing to get the number in each of these categories. And if that's the only thing that you want to do, that's a very efficient way to do it. But there's also a way to do this within a summarize call. There's a function called n, just with parentheses, and that counts up the number of rows that meet that criteria. So if we want it, we could add on a column where we're counting up the numbers of observations in each of these, the same kind of thing that we got with count. But in this case, we have it as an extra column on this larger summary data frame that we're creating. So I've done n, I'll just call this column n, but we could call it whatever we want. And then we're using this n function with nothing in the middle. And that'll, again, just count up the number of rows within each of the groups that we've grouped by. So if we run that, we can see that that information from running count before, that's getting added on. And in this case, it's really convenient because it gets added right along with all of the other things that we had in terms of summaries of the numeric column. 
Finally, just as a note, in this case, we are working with a column that already was in that factor class. But in some cases, you might have something that was read in as a character class and you want to convert it to this so you can do these kinds of things with it. In the forecats package, there is a function called as underscore factor, and that will take a, a column and convert it for your a vector, excuse me, and convert it for you into a factor.